everyone should have some basic knowledge of the atom. Some of the interesting aspects are that the nucleus of the atom are very impressive. It is very small in size, it has a super large density, and it holds a magnitude of energy. What you're looking at right there are the basics of an atom. So uh, let me point out to you. So right there in that center, that is the nucleus. And then outside on this part right here, on this outer portion, that's where the electrons are. So most of the reactions people are familiar with are with these little electrons on the outside. But nuclear reactions, they're interested in that center part, in, in the nucleus. Therefore the name, nuclear reactions. So in, those, in that nucleus, what they're doing is they're splitting this thing. They break this thing apart and make them into two smaller things. And that's what creates the energy. That's what's, what they call uh, fission, like fizzes, like a fizz, fizz, fizz. So let's say that uh, this nucleus was the size of a ping pong ball. Uh, one of its electrons, which surrounds it, would be about three-tenths of a mile away or 0.3 miles away or a quarter block and the density is super heavy. It is millions, billions of grams uh, per milliliter. Granted, there's 350 of these milliliters in a can of soda. Sanonovrit functions by conducting nuclear fission. That's splitting a heavy nucleus into two nuclei with smaller mass numbers. This results in a tremendous release of energy. Okay, so right here what we see is the process of fission actually beginning. So it goes from like a little neutron right there. On the left you have the uranium molecule. And that uranium molecule uh, is split into two smaller molecules. So let me show you. So right here, the way that you initiate these, these re bonds is you have your nucleus right there. There's the nucleus. The nucleus hits the uranium-235 molecule. That one then becomes unstable because the neutron gets introduced and it spits out two smaller molecules and then a lot of energy. Nuclear reactors are like a double-edged sword. Because of the tremendous energies involved, it seemed desirable to develop the fission process as an energy source to produce electricity. To accomplish this, reactors were designed in which controlled fission can occur um, so that it doesn't create a critical mass and you have a Hiroshima on your hands. The resulting energy is used to heat water to produce steam to run turbine generators. Much the same way as burning coal uh, to produce energy. You produce heat uh, that then runs turbine steam engines and converts that into electricity. In the reactor core, uranium has been enriched to about 3% purity. It is housed in a cylinder which contains control rods composed of substances that absorb neutrons. They are used to regulate the power level of the reactor since it's the neutrons that tend to cause the chain reaction. Those are the ones that you want to control so that you don't have a Nagasaki or Hiroshima in your nuclear reactor. All right, so here are the basics of a nuclear reactor. This is San Onofre right here. So this big old casing as you, that, that's going around the laser, that's San Onofre, the nuclear power plant in San Onofre. And it's close to the water or to the beach because it needs it to cool. Okay, so this is what happens. So here you have the core and inside that core, you have these, you have your uranium, uranium cylinder. So inside the core, you have these uranium cylinders and those are the ones that produce or have the uranium that begins to decay and you control that decay process by these other control rods right here which control the amount of neutrons so as you saw it's the neutrons that tend to cause the chain reaction so these control rods help to control that so that um, you don't have a su reach super critical mass and then end up uh, with a blow up instead of a meltdown we have a single unit here of water that contains circulating water and so here we can say that this is the cool water. So the cool water right here is coming in. It's getting heated in the reactor. That cool water then turns into really hot water. That really hot water then goes through this other chamber here. And what it does is now you have another cycle. Now those cycles are not really connected to each other. So what that cycle does is it has, again, it's cool water coming in. 
that cool water then comes into contact with the superheated water. Uh, that water then turns into steam. That, that steam then goes into the uh, turbine and the steam turbine and that steam turbine starts to generate uh, electricity. After that superheated water is converted into electricity by the steam turbine, the remainder of the steam is then condensed or cooled back into water from a third cycle and that third cycle that's where the ocean water comes into play because the ocean water is constant uh, it's got a constant temperature there's so much of it that uh, because there's so much of that water it doesn't really matter how much how you heat it up so here's that cycle so you take some of that ocean water that ocean water is pumped uh, into the steam that has already generated the energy, that steam then condenses into water and that cooled water then goes back into the second cycle so it seems like a perpetual cycle going on here um, but all that excess energy is released back into the ocean water so the ocean water comes in here at 27 degrees Celsius uh, it helps cool this water because it's constantly moving uh, but as this water is being cooled, the ocean water is being heated, so then it is dumped back into the ocean at an increase of 10 degrees Celsius. Around nuclear power plants, the water is very warm there. But you got to be careful because that water that's warm, it, it could have come into contact with uh, radiation uh, somehow from the leaks. As you can see, some of the, you know, uh, there's been leaks, you know, so some of that radiation uh, could have been exchanged into the ocean water so you could have high levels of radiation in the ocean water there so if you're swimming there um, it's probably not a good idea because you'll become contaminated with uh, some high levels of radiation so the reactor is designed so that should a malfunction occur the control rods automatically insert into the core to stop the reaction so you have a whole bunch of neutron absorbers that will quench the nuclear reaction from continuing so water is circulated throughout the core to extract the heat generated by the energy of fission because when you split these atoms they generate a lot of heat so you transfer that heat into the water the energy can then be passed on via a heat exchanger to water in a turbine system so these are the turbine systems that generate electricity so although the uh, concentration of the uranium is not great enough to cause supercritical mass a failure of this cooling system can lead to temperatures high enough to melt the core resulting in the meltdown this is the scary part having the meltdown because since January the San Onofre nuclear reactor has been out of commission because of leaks and the um, concrete housing or those two bubbles that you see that's what contains the core so if those things are leaking they could either leak heat or radiation and some of this radiation lasts for thousands of years one of the dangerous ones uh, of the types of radiations to have leaked out is iodine 131 this is the one that uh, people were also afraid of in the uh, tsunami that happened in Japan and their Fukushima nuclear reactor it was spitting out iodine 131 so people were rushing to the uh, Walgreens to get iodine pills because apparently iodine 131 affects your thyroid that's the portion close to your throat that can lead to certain types of cancers or thyroid cancers another hazardous chemical that can be emitted from these nuclear reactors is strontium. Um, strontium is similar to calcium which can collect in your bones and that heavy metal can cause uh, leukemia and bone cancer. Well my fellow YouTubers out there this was a little knowledge given to you by Poly Commentarius regarding another commentary on the San Onofre nuclear power plant. Hope you learned something, some of the basics, this is just some very basic knowledge that people should know or uh, be aware of because this uh, reactor is pretty close to home. I mean, if you're in Southern California, that's the only one that's in Southern California. So it's good just to know your basic knowledge, just your basics, A, Bs, and Cs. And that's what I'm doing here for you today. Hope you learned something. Have a good day. Check back for more new commentaries.